If you currently sell on Etsy, you may be wondering if selling to other countries is worth your time and effort. Are there any laws you should be aware of? How much are customers willing to pay for shipping? And what about shipping times? Are customers on Etsy really willing to wait that long? In today's video, I have the answers to all of these questions and more. For those who are new here, my name is Starla Moore, founder of the Handmade Alpha Academy for Etsy sellers and manager at eRank.com, Etsy's most popular SEO tool. And recently, our team at eRank was able to set up a survey that polled real Etsy customers while they were shopping in order to get their thoughts on some of our most common concerns as sellers. In this video up here, I cover the factors that buyers said were most important to them when considering making a purchase on Etsy. So be sure to check that out if you missed it. But continuing our deep dive into this exclusive Etsy data survey, today we are covering everything you need to know about selling internationally on Etsy, whether you're selling from the US or another country. And by the end of this video, hopefully you'll be able to decide if expanding your shipping radius is worth it for you. But before we dive into the details, I just want to take a moment to give a quick shout out to this week's featured shop. Hey you, thanks so much for your love and support. If you'd like to submit for your own shout out, tag Handmade Alphas in a photo or screenshot of yourself watching this video, either in your Instagram feed or Instagram stories. During our survey of 1,010 Etsy shoppers, we asked the question, would you buy from an Etsy shop based in another country? And what are your biggest concerns about buying from another country? So first, let's figure out how many shoppers are willing to buy outside of their own country in the first place. Of the 1,010 Etsy shoppers polled, 56.3% of them said that they were willing to buy from an international seller. 28.7% of shoppers said that they may be willing to buy from an international seller. And 15.8% of shoppers polled said that they would not buy from an international seller. Which are great numbers. With only 15.8% saying that they are totally unwilling to shop internationally, that means that you have a great probability of opening new markets by offering international shipping. But it's also important to understand what makes shoppers nervous about buying internationally. If a customer is afraid to make a purchase, this can lead to doubt, buyer remorse, bad reviews, or even unpleasant conversations with the customer during the transaction process. The best way to avoid these common concerns is to prevent them and to ensure that your listing answers most of these key concerns before the shopper even completes the purchase. That way, they know exactly what to expect. The first issue that shoppers say concerns them is language barriers. But of the 1,010 shoppers polled, only 21.1% found language barriers to be the most concerning issue when shopping internationally. I often have non-English speaking sellers ask me if they'll have issues selling on Etsy, but based on these survey results, it seems that most buyers are pretty understanding. Lucky for us, Etsy actually has decent translation technology, which can help to automatically translate much of our listings to a variety of different languages. And if you need a little additional help translating your listings or marketing, feel free to post in my own Handmade Alpha Facebook community where our group of over 11,000 sellers can help you. I'll leave the link down below. In terms of your Etsy conversations, you may need to turn to a better solution for translations, such as Google Translate, or if you want something a little more accurate, check out Microsoft Translator. The next concern shoppers had about ordering internationally were issues with customs. 35.1% of buyers polled during our survey said that customs issues were their biggest concern, and rightfully so. If you've ever ordered something internationally, you've probably had an order end up lost in customs. So it's important to have a plan for when customs issues occur. The best way to prevent issues with customs is to ensure that your customs information is properly filled out when creating your international shipping label. This includes filling out the weight and dimensions of your package, the quantity of items in your package, the weight of those individual items within the package, the total value of those items, which is how much your customer paid, and the tariff code for your item, which is super easy to Google. If I were shipping this bubble mailer with this hat inside, I might say that the box is eight by nine by one with a total weight of five ounces when the product is inside. Since I'm only sending the single product, I'll add one knit hat to the description of contents and I'll add that the hat weighs four ounces. 
And maybe for my packages, I also include a free sticker with my logo on it. So I'll add one paper sticker to the contents and I'll go ahead and mark it as one ounce just to make sure that our total weight adds up to five ounces. To make this a little easier, you can always buy a cheap scale on Amazon and for small items, a kitchen scale is perfect. Next, I need to find my tariff code. To do this, I'll head over to Google and type in the raw materials used for my items. Customs doesn't care that this is a blue winter hat. They want to know what raw materials are being shipped into their country. So I'll search for wool yarn knit hat tariff code. And most of the time, you won't even need to click anything. All you need is the HS code that pops up right here. If you're using an online shipping service and you struggle to get it to accept your tariff code, there are a few things that you can try. Start by separating out the digits with periods. If our tariff code is 650-500-10, you'll want to add a period after the first four numbers, then before the two last numbers. So that combination is four digits dot two digits dot two digits. If that doesn't work, try removing the last two digits from the end, which will usually be zero zero or one zero. So your code will look like this. When it comes to shipping internationally, unfortunately, sometimes delays happen. If you notice that a package is delayed or a customer contacts you about a possible delay, just be sure to communicate politely, let them know that customs delays are normal, and don't leave them hanging if the item ends up being lost in the mail. I know it sucks to replace items that have gone missing, but if you ordered something online and it got lost, you'd expect the seller to make the situation right. Document the refund or replacement and write it off on your taxes at the end of the year. The next thing that concerned shoppers was import duties and taxes. With 36.7% of shoppers saying that import taxes are their biggest concerns when shopping internationally. And unfortunately, this is a moot point because these are buyer obligations. If their country requires an import tax for certain products, as the customer, it's their responsibility to pay those taxes not the sellers. If you ever have a customer get upset about being charged a tax during the delivery of their item, let them know that unfortunately, duty fees and import taxes are beyond your control and link them to Etsy's policies on import fees. I'll go ahead and link the policy down below this video so you can bookmark it. The next two survey results are the big ones. The two factors that shoppers said are the most concerning to them when shopping internationally and the factors that you need to be aware of if you plan to sell to an international audience. But before before we jump into that data, I want to let you know that I just launched a massive free resource for those who struggle with Etsy SEO. My all new Etsy SEO Doodles toolbox is a collection of my very best SEO tutorials and resources, all laid out in the exact order that I recommend for maximum results. And for the very first time ever, I'm also including a free 30 day trial of eRank Pro to help you do keyword research as you optimize your listings. To get my free Etsy SEO Doodles toolbox, you can click the link up here and down below. All right, back to business. Of the 1,010 shoppers surveyed, 67.1% said that the shipping time was the most concerning factor when shopping internationally. The best way to make shoppers feel more comfortable with your shipping speeds is to make sure that they're fully aware of those shipping speeds before they even place the order. I recommend putting information about your shipping times in one of your 10 listing photos, in your listing descriptions, in your Etsy shop announcement, in your Etsy policies, and your FAQ section at the bottom of your shop. I also recommend keeping constant communication with your Etsy buyers throughout the transaction process and keeping a close eye on possible delays. The best way to do this is by using the eRank.com delivery status report, which shows all of your outgoing packages from one single page. If a delay pops up in shipping, you'll be able to see it and reach out to the customer to let them know. Remember, customers don't want to be mad at us. They just don't want to be left hanging and keeping them informed every step of the way is the best prevention method for unhappy customers and bad reviews. Lastly, let's talk about shipping cost. Of the 1,010 shoppers surveyed, 69.8% said that the cost of shipping was the most concerning factor when shopping. But don't stress out about this one. Shipping costs what it costs. There's no way to make it any cheaper. If you want to experiment with offering free shipping, try looping your shipping cost into your overall product cost in order to show up in search for items that ship free. While this
this may not work for lower priced items, it never hurts to experiment with free shipping to see if it helps to encourage more buyers to take the plunge. So now it's up to you. Selling internationally is an amazing way to maximize profits and expand your overall selling radius to potential customers all around the globe. It may feel scary at first, but I promise, after you ship your first international order, you'll realize just how easy it is, and you'll create a workflow for yourself that makes shipping internationally just as fast and easy as shipping locally. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this video covered only one of the questions that we asked in this massive buyer survey. So be sure to head over to Pam Duthie's channel up here, where she's covered even more questions that we asked shoppers. In fact, I think today she released a video where she covers her own tips for international shipping as a seller who lives outside of the US. So be sure to go check that out next. And if you like this video and want to see even more of the Etsy buyer data broken down over the next few weeks, be sure to let me know in the comments. Overall, success on Etsy means branching out your markets to other parts of the world in order to expand your overall profit potential. And with a little science, a lot of data, and some help from a trusted Etsy expert, you'll be well on your way to Etsy success. Cue the funky lo-fi beat.